Have you guys gotten your free stocks from Moomoo yet? If not, use that link down below or go to stocksurfest.com slash Moomoo, deposit at least 100 bucks, and boom, you get 13 stocks each up to 2000 bucks. And with that being said, cheers. Let's dive into the video. So check it out. Today was an absolute roller coaster ride in the stock market. We were green in the beginning of the day. Then we sharply declined in the middle of the day. Then at the end of the day, we ended up rallying into the close. So we got to break down what I'm seeing on SPY Triple Q. We have seven stocks to break down. I think four of which, maybe five. Actually, no, it's for reported earnings. So let's just dive into the video. So we had the S&P 500 close up 0.7%. The Russell went up 0.8%. We had the NASDAQ up half a percent as the Dow went up. Uh, let's see here, about 0.6%. And get this, guys, the VIX went down, uh, what was it, 4%, over 4%. Now the VIX is back in the lower 20s. Let me pull this chart up, guys. Very quickly, you can see earlier in the day the VIX was pushing 26. So intraday, it's down or it went down about 9%. And overall, now on the four hour time frame, you guys can see the VIX is starting to sell off uh, pretty aggressively. It almost hit 30. Now it's, uh, you know, getting to the lower 20s. Like I said, it's at 2360. So VIX is down. Let's see the metals here. And by the way, in a couple of minutes, we're going to break down Bitcoin and Ethereum. So make sure you guys stick on throughout this video. Right now, we have the metals. Silver's at about 1844 an ounce, up 1% on the day as gold went up, or actually went down half a percent, went down uh, 8 point or eight dollars and sixty cents. It closed at about seventeen twenty an ounce. So let's see here, going back to spy what I'm seeing, right? And again, we saw a big pump at the end of the day, and I'd argue today was a win for the bulls. I mean, it's it's not hard to make that argument considering all the indexes went up and we rallied into the close. But earlier in the day, when I made my 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 previous video. It was not so obvious that it was a win for the bulls. And again, that goes back to the volatile nature of the market, especially today. Spy went from 394 in the morning to about 400 midday, down to about 395 midday, and then it went back to 400 at close. So this is moving very aggressively in all directions. And at this point, 402 is right around the corner. I've talked about this, uh, you know, level time and time again. 402, you all can see that was resistance last week, I believe, at some point. When was that? Uh, yeah, the 2nd of September. If we break that point, if we start going 405, especially above the highs from the end of August being about 406, if we start getting above 410, there could be a big breakout reversal on SPY. It's, it's not there yet, but we are showing some signs, the initial signs <clears throat> of that potentially coming as we are closing above the moving averages here, and uh, we're getting close to 402. So what do you guys think about that? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, and let's see Triple Q here, which is also starting to make some initial moves. It, it closed above the moving averages like SPY, but it's right under the highs <clears throat> from last week. You guys can see. Right around, where was that? $302? Yeah, 303 is the highest from about a couple of days ago. So if we start getting out of there, 305, 310, we start breaking 310, especially Triple Q is going to start going. At that point, we're going to get a legitimate, or at least the starts, of a legitimate reversal. So what do you guys think? I mean, we're still definitely 100% in bull trap territory, but we're starting to make some signs. You know, if we start getting a little bit more upside here, it could start accelerating. What do you guys think? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. And let's dive over here to Webull and talk about crypto. Let's see what happened today with Bitcoin, Ethereum, all that good stuff. So currently when I'm filming, guys, and mind you, it is about 420 right now. Actually, exactly. <clears throat> well, now it's 421. And we have Ethereum sitting at 1650. It's up 1.5% on the day. And it looks like overall... It consolidated for a couple of days from the end of August up until pretty much today, yesterday, it was consolidating. Now we're starting to break up. Again, today, it's up 1.3%. Yesterday, I mean, well, maybe not yesterday, but about 10 days ago, I guess that's a big difference. Uh, Ethereum was at 1400 so it's up about $230 in the past about 10 days. So is this the bottom? I mean, I'm not calling it for sure, but <clears throat> no doubt about it. It's been 
moving sideways at about 15, 16, now it's starting to break out. So if we start moving, I'd say past 17, 1750, it would be safe to say that 2000 could be right around the corner. You know, maybe that, 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 that'd be a point where it could be the bottom, you know, right now it could be the bottom, but we're not fully there yet. You know, I, I would put an alert here. Actually, can I even set an alert here? Um, <clears throat> we'll figure that out another time. But if this breaks 17, that's kind of what I'm looking at on the upside. It might start to go. We shall see. But it's not there quite yet. Now, let's see what Bitcoin is doing. Let's pull this up. I always have trouble pulling up Bitcoin sometimes here on Weeble. Hold on. Wait a second, guys. Give me a second. There we go. There we <coughs> there we go. Jesus. Hold on. Right now, Bitcoin is at 19.4. And this does not look nearly, nearly as promising for the bulls as Ethereum does. I mean, this looks horrible. This looks like it's one, I mean, it really is just one leg down away from going back to that low from the middle of June. So what I said with Ethereum does not apply here to Bitcoin at all. I think we could end up, by the looks of it, still going under 19 into the 18s, maybe down to that low from a couple of weeks ago. So be careful. I mean, Bitcoin is up a little bit on the day, all right, but it's definitely in bull trap territory. You guys can see it maybe on the two hour or maybe the one hour. Uh, maybe the 30 minute. Actually, you can see it here on the one hour. Does that not look like it's in bull trap territory? I mean, come on, guys. Look at this. Let me get a trend line. Let me draw it out for you all so you can see it before I transition to the next part of the video. That's a bull trap. It's in bull trap territory. No doubt about it. So what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you want 12 free stocks from Webull, this platform right here, use that link down below. Or go to stocksurfest.com slash Weeble, deposit any amount of money, and you enjoy some free stocks. And it also helps out the channel. It's a win-win, guys. I appreciate you all as always. So now let's dive back into Thinkorswim and talk a little bit about what we're noticing here with some of these stocks. Yes. You guys ready for this? You guys ready for this? Hit that like button if you haven't done so already. I appreciate you all again as always. So DocuSign reported earnings after the bell and full disclosure I have not looked at these earnings yet, <clears throat> but holy smokes, look at that candle, guys. That tells me the earnings must have been good. So it closed at 58 bucks, and mind you, it already went up 5% on the day. And here after the bell, it's at $68. It is up 10 bucks after the bell. In other words, 18%. So let's see what they reported because, again, I did not, <clears throat> not see these numbers. <clears throat> Man, I should have hydrated before this video. My fault, guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> Q2 EPS came in at $0.44 cents versus $0.42 cents estimated, so they beat on that. And it looks like they beat revenue. Yep, six, uh, $622.2 million versus, let's see here, $602.34 million estimated. So beat EPS, beat revenue, and it's probably the guidance that's moving the stock. <clears throat> let's see here. They see Q3 revenue 624 to 628 million versus 625. All right, that's good. They see full year 22 revenue uh, 2.47 to 2.48 billion versus 2.47. All right, that's good, right in line. So I guess it's running up because maybe investors were just way too, what's the word here? Uh, pricing in way too much. Bad, bad stuff. I mean, it, it was the stock was down from 160 bucks to 53 bucks. I mean, it was pretty much priced. It might have been priced in, uh, or rather, the stock wasn't expecting these decent, pretty good earnings with pretty good guidance. Maybe they were expecting worse, and the stock's already been being down so much. It's getting a bit of a, kind of a spring effect. Boom, a little bit of a, a pop, and that's what we're seeing now. Is it fully reversing? No way in heck, guys. It is still clearly in a downtrend. If I show you all of this, give me a second. <clears throat> you guys see that? We're still at lower highs, at a lower high. I mean, this is not something, you know, that we haven't seen in the past. You know, we're still at a point where we could easily start going back towards the low 50s. I mean, if we start breaking out above, let's say, 7580 into the 90s then all right that's going to be most likely a legitimate reversal but we're not there yet we are not there yet so what do you guys think do you own DocuSign I personally do not but let me know in the comments do you and now let's go over another one here which is Billy Billy this is a Chinese stock and funny thing is 
DocuSign's up 17%. Billy Billy went down 15% on the day. So this one got destroyed as DocuSign's going up, even though they're not really related at all. <clears throat> but that's interesting. I just got a little ice chip in my mouth, guys. <laughs> Revenue came in for Billy Billy at $732.9 million versus $709. Point four, so they beat on that. EPS came in at negative seventy-seven cents, so they lost money on the quarter. And average monthly users reached three hundred five point seven million, up twenty-nine percent year over year. And I'm not too sure why their their stock is you know got bludgeoned today. I mean, it was down fifteen <clears throat> percent. Like I said, not too sure why. Uh, let's see, maybe guidance. I didn't see anything on guidance though when I was looking at it earlier. Um, yeah, I mean, oh, here it says downbeat revenue outlook. Maybe it's that. Okay, downbeat revenue outlook, company issues, revenue guidance. But where is it? I don't see the revenue guidance. <clears throat> Maybe I'm missing it. I got to go on the actual investor relations page, guys. It might not be here. But overall, I guess it's that, guidance. Guidance is causing Billy Billy to go down 15%. And I honestly haven't done much research into this company um, you know, I, I don't know much about it, but it's getting to a point where it's getting to the lows from the middle of March. <clears throat> lows from the middle of March were a little bit under 15 bucks. We're now at 20 bucks. We're a stone's throw away. I mean, if this stock goes down another 25%, right, it's going to be at 15, roughly 25, 20, 25, whatever it ends up being. It's going to be at 15 bucks. So, Keep your eyes on Billy Billy. And another one that reported today is Smith & Wesson. Let's pull that up. <clears throat> Smith & Wesson. Oh, my gosh. This is free falling right now, guys. They closed at 1340. Closed down 1% on the day. And here after the bell, let's pull this up. <clears throat> they are down 10%. They closed at 1340. Now they're at 1217. They're down 10%. So let's pull up the live news tab and see what they did. Oh my goodness. 11 cents, guys. 11 cents versus the 34 cent estimate on EPS. What a miss on profit there, guys. That is awful. And revenue. Oh my gosh. 84.4 million versus 130 million estimates. So this is a company that I think I owned it. When was it though? I owned it a couple of months ago. Not, it's probably been a year at this point that I, uh, well, I don't own it anymore, but I did own it sold out of it. I think I broke even or maybe made a little profit on it. And I just found, <clears throat> I figured out the investment. Not, not that I figured out, like I had an epiphany or something like that. But when I was in it, I'm like, maybe I made a mistake, you know, a month or two after I bought it. We're not going to get into that in this video, but they, I knew they paid a big, yeah, they paid a big dividend, still do about 3%. So people that are in this, they're definitely in it for the dividend. I mean, if they were to do something like what company, we recently talked about a company that cut their dividend. I forget what it is now uh, on camera, but if I remember, I'll maybe maybe I'll mention it. But if Smith and Wesson cut their dividend like that company did that I'm forgetting, this stock would literally go to five bucks probably, or or, or like seven eight dollars. You know, hopefully that doesn't happen for all of you dividend investors out there that own it. But be mindful of that. They might be cutting the dividend. I don't know. I have to look deeper into the financials. You know, the 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 earnings, annual report, whatever. But I don't know. I mean, if they need that cash, think about it, guys. Dividends are a are part of the business at the end of the day. You know, companies make earnings, and they don't necessarily have to pay you a dividend. They could keep that money and reinvest it into the business. Companies that, you know, can't reinvest it into the business because they're not really growing anymore, like I guess Smith & Wesson, they pay out to div uh, the dividend to shareholders. That's how they give capital out. Uh, in other companies, they buy back stock. It, it's it's all, it depends. But in this case, they, they might be in a cash crunch. I don't know. I have to look into the company, but they're not doing well right now. I have to look deeper into it again because I forget. It's been like a year since I've looked into their numbers. Uh, but let's see here. The next one is FCEL, Fuel Cell Energy. They reported in this chart, funny enough, uh, looks pretty decent, and the reason why I say funny enough is because it's a penny stock, and a lot of the times penny stocks charts, they don't look all that great. Uh, but in this case, this one looks decent. It's at the bottom of the channel. It's down about 
30%. So it's in a bear market in the past couple of weeks. That's a big drop. Uh, but again, we're still holding this channel. Now, let's see if buyers come in overall. I mean, that's what I'm looking for. I think, yeah, I have an alert at 430. I'm keeping that there. They reported, I think this morning, uh, yeah, they did negative eight cents versus negative six cents. So they missed on EPS. And they beat on revenue. I was going to say they missed, but they beat on revenue. 43.1 million versus 35.81 million estimated. So nice, uh, nice beat there on revenue. I'm not seeing anything on. Um, oh, it looks like a year ago they did 26 million of revenue. So they did grow a good 50%, over 50%. Uh, year over year, pretty solid there. And uh, they crushed the estimate for revenue. So with companies like Fuel Cell, guys, they're not too focused on making profits now because they're trying to grow the business. So they have extra expenses because they're trying to grow the business. That's just how it goes. We're not going to do a deep dive lesson on that right now, but that's just how it goes. So they're really focusing on growing top line. And if they beat top line, if their guidance is good for top line, beat estimates, whatever, it's most likely going to be a good day for the stock. Well, in this case, it didn't do that well. But, uh, you know, let's let's just put it this way. If they missed on revenue, it, it would have been down <clears throat> way more. And, and I'm confident in that. But they did well on revenue, and the stock's chart is still holding up. So let's see. You know, if we do break 4, 430, there could be some upside there on fuel cell. The next one that I want to go over, guys, and now we're going to talk about two energy stocks that didn't report earnings, but they're looking pretty interesting here. The first one is Occidental Petroleum, ticker symbol OXY. You guys see this? <clears throat> it went down 1.3% on the day, and now it is down officially $13 a share, down 15% from the recent $77 high, and that's just in a couple of days. We're talking how long? I mean, geez, a week, not even, a little bit, well, maybe almost two weeks, <clears throat> but overall, it is down a lot. It's oversold, and it's at a point where, looking at the past couple of months, Occidental, Occidental Petroleum has held this uh, this point in the chart. We're at a point where we're right by the 180 SMA. We're at this trend line. I feel like buyers could come in here. We're not quite yet seeing it. You know, we have to be patient. <clears throat> but I think at some point here, um, you know, in the next couple of days, maybe at some point next week, considering it's the end of the week pretty much right now, we had a short week. We'll see what happens next week. I think there could be some uh, buying pressure here. So I'm going to set my alert right now. The stock's at 64.60. I'm going to put my alert at 66 bucks. Mark is at or above 66 bucks, and we will see what it does from there. The next one is Occidental, or not Occidental Petroleum, guys. Exxon Mobil. I mix those up sometimes. Funny enough, I do. I don't know why. Uh, Exxon Mobil went up 0.8% on the day. I have my alert at 97. We're a stone's throw away from that point. 97 is right by the 50 SMA here on the four hour chart. You guys can see that. And it's right by the high from the end of July. So if we do take that point out, 95, 96, 97, I think we have a clear shot to 100, 102 a share, maybe even 105 a share, but we're not going to get ahead of ourselves in this video. But overall, that's what I'm seeing, you know, 100, 105 a share if we successfully break 96, 97 on Exxon Mobil. And the last stock for this video, guys, if you stuck till the end, I appreciate you guys. Leave me a comment, say till the end. I appreciate you all. As always, Airbnb, ticker symbol ABNB. This one's starting to break to the upside. Today it went up 2%. Great day. It broke out of the wedge. We have a move above both moving averages here. And now we're trading at a fresh two-week high, I think. Yeah, roughly a two-week high on Airbnb. And now it's approaching 120 bucks, which you guys can see when it was in that head and shoulders, 120 bucks was the neckline. So if we crack that point, 120, I think we're going up to at least 128, 130. Followed by, let's cancel this alert here, followed by, I'd argue, low mid 130s. So I think this is tuning up pretty nicely. You know, it's getting there. I'm going to set my new alert at 120 bucks a share. Again, that neckline of the old head and shoulders. If we break there, I'm telling you guys, this could get to 130, 135, 
fairly quickly, in my opinion. So with that being said, if you all found value in this video, we're going to wrap it up. Hit that like button, subscribe. I really appreciate you guys as always. And check out my Patreon. If you want to join that, that's linked right down below. And don't forget to also get your 13 stocks from Moomoo Moo with a $100 deposit. Each of those could be up to 2000 bucks, And also get your 12 stocks from Webull with any amount deposited. All of those free stocks are linked down below. I appreciate you guys as always. And with that being said, cheers. I will catch you in the next video. Peace out.